This is the demo for Weight Stats by Agent. And if you're interested in learning more about weight statistics, Paul Randall did a Pluralsight course called SQL Server Performance Troubleshooting Using Weight Statistics. I'm also going to be using extended events in this demo, and Jonathan Cahayas did a few different courses on extended events, including SQL Server Introduction to Extended Events, again on Pluralsight. So I'm going to connect to the subscriber and demonstrate using weight stats and extended events to find out why the distributor writer thread is taking as long as it was. So the previous demo, we narrowed it down to the distributor and not the log reader. And then within the distributor, we narrowed it down to write activity and not read activity. So I'm going to connect to the subscriber and find out what session ID is associated with the distribution agent. So I execute this and I see my session ID is 53 for the program that has the following name that reflects the distribution agent. So next step is I'll create an extended event session and I'll plug in my value of 53. So that's the session ID I'm interested in. And I have a new session called replication agent weights and I'm looking at the event SQL OS wait info. So I want to see whenever that session ID has to wait, I want to capture that information. So I'm going to create this extended event session. I've got my target file names right here, and I'm going to turn it on by saying alter event session, the name of the event session, server state start. So let's go ahead and create it and kick it off. And next I will go into a separate window on the subscriber and I'm going to kick off a transaction just like we did before in the previous demo where I'm setting transaction isolation level serializable. I'm selecting a range of rows and it's going to cause blocking. So I will go ahead and execute this at the subscriber. And next I will issue an insert. So I'm going to be on the publisher and let's go ahead and just say latency example and then I'll say wait stats and go ahead and execute this on server one. And if we go to view details, so let's go to Object Explorer and right click our publication and say launch replication monitor. And if I go ahead and expand out server one, go to our publication, let's go to tracer tokens and insert a new token. And so we don't have any latency on the publisher to distributor, so nothing blocking there. But notice that the distributor to subscriber is still pending. So we're still waiting on that transaction to commit at the subscriber. So let's say you have a report writer and they're not following the rules or not playing well with others, then this can cause issues with your topology. So let's go back to our window and I'll close out of my insert statement and then we'll commit our transaction. So this means that rows will start flowing through again. And in the meantime, I'm going to stop my extended event session. So let's go ahead and do an alter event session, session state stop. And now I have a set of statements that will shred through the information. So I'm going to insert into a temporary table and I'm going to shred out the XML of the extended event information that I captured to a file. And then I'll aggregate out the wait stats by session. Let's go ahead and execute this. And now we have for session ID 53, the different wait stats time that accumulated over the period of time that I had that extended event session running. And notice that the pattern is very clear here. Most of our wait time, if not all of it, is due to this lock M RLN NL. And so that particular wait type occurs when a task is waiting to acquire a null lock on the current key value and an insert range lock between the current and the previous key. Now, with that wait type, we know that the end user was running a set transaction isolation level serializable and was blocking transactional replication activity. But you can see now I'm not guessing. I now can then start looking for any requests that are going against the subscriber that are using isolation levels that I don't want or keeping transactions open too long. And I'm not wasting time on other things. For example, I'm not looking at the IO path or looking at memory. I'm very much pointed towards one direction, which is long-term blocking. So this is a very helpful technique, and it's actually a technique that you can use for any kind of application request. It doesn't just need to be replication.